be here again. Um, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, right? We were in uh, Riverside with Jesse. On our way back, we, we were traveling together, and on our way back, Jesse was, uh, he just passed out in the car. He was sleeping. He's, he's bad for pilot. But he was sleeping there, and well, suddenly I started feeling, I started having the feeling, and I wanted to sing. I don't sing very, you know, I don't sing uh, publicly either. Right? But I, I've been learning this song, um, starting, I started two weeks ago. And sometimes I, I like to, to listen to some Jewish um, songs and music. And I learned one of the songs, even when I didn't know the meaning of the words. That's how I started le learning uh, English, by singing songs, even when I didn't know the meaning of the, the words. And later, later I used to go to translations and to understand what I was singing. But um, that, that's how we start, right? So I hope that just in a couple of years, I hope Jesus doesn't come yet, but I mean, I hope Jesus comes sooner. But I hope that I can learn another language before Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to sing it for you, and later I will explain the, the words. Because, because we were talking with Jesse that nothing is coincidence. And I was just singing this song, I learned this song, and not imagining that two weeks later there will be a... A giant word uh, across the sea. So um, let me just sing it, okay? Jose Shalom Bim Ruma, Uya Se Shalom Aleinu, Be Al Kol Yisrael, Be Imru Imru Amen. Jose. Shalom bim ruma, uya se shalom aleinu, be al kol Yisrael, be imru imru amen. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu, be al kol Yisrael, ya se shalom. Ya se shalom, shalom aleinu be al kol Yisrael. The words of this song says, May he who makes peace in his high places, may he make a peace upon us Amen. and on all of Israel, and say Amen. I was, I was just talking to Brother Andrew, he came in and helped me preaching in the Spanish church, but yesterday we were talking about how humankind, we as human beings, we could live for a long life in this world, but we are not ready to live for eternity without God. We will not be ready to live for eternity without an example of character of love and perfection and justice. We could live for eternity, but without God, this will be a bigger chaos. Living for eternity without God, it will turn our world into a world of disaster and violence and hatred and sadness. But what I like about Jesus is that after he shared his messages, even when he was talking about the prophecies and the final days, he gave a hope. And there's, a, there's, I think, that's reason enough to live in this world for this period of time until Jesus comes again. Just having that hope in our hearts help us to know why we are living in this world, to know the purpose of why we are living in this time, especially. Sometimes I think that I will prefer, I'd rather live 30 years or 50 years ago in a different culture when people used to think that it was, you know, people were more civilized and educated. But they had their challenges too. Every year you're living in, the year before it was worst. <laughs> and people learn every year and every year something new comes up and that's, that new thing, sometimes people don't know how to deal with it and sometimes we don't include God into the new things and that's when chaos starts. So I would like to uh, study with you this morning in our Bibles, Matthew chapter 24. 
Matthew chapter 24, the title for this chapter says the destruction of the temple and signs of the end times. Which is a powerful message from Jesus to his disciples. And before we start reading, before we start studying together, I would like to invite you to bow your heads with me so we can, uh, we can pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, the bliss we have, like Mike said, the opportunity we have to live in this country and to open our Bibles with freedom, with total freedom. We thank you because today we can gather together as a family in Jesus Christ to worship your name. Amen. We believe, Lord, that in the future, we don't know when, but we believe, we feel that in that day is coming very soon. Very soon, Lord, we're going to see how the people of God is going to be persecuted. Because the people in our times are calling evil good and good evil. And Lord, we just want to understand what Jesus tried to, share, to say, to share with his disciples. And what Jesus tried to share with us. So we can get that hope again. So we can get uh, encourage, encouragement and overall, Lord, to know how to treat each other while we are here in this world together. Amen. Bless us, Lord. Forgive our, forgive our sins. I ask you, Lord, that today I don't share my point of view only. I don't share only my intelligence. I don't share only what I understand from your word. But I ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can touch my mind and my heart and my lips so I can share the right message for my family here. Amen. And I ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can touch the mind and the hearts of my brothers and sisters here so they, they can take your word as a word of love, as a word of hope, as a word of encouragement so we can, so we can walk together to the promised land. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just by seeing the news, just by watching the news, I don't spend too much time uh, watching the news because instead of getting hope, instead of getting uh, encouragement, I get stressed, my, I get a headache, uh, my heart hurts, and I, I don't spend too much time there. And now I see that people, um, people are not watching the news on TV anymore. People have the accessibility to publish everything on the phone, online, through social media. So there's a lot of people who say you have to be on the right side of the story. You have to look at the right side of the story. You have to be aware of the truth. And believe it or not, I was, I was praying uh, on Wednesday with the Spanish church. I was telling them we, can, we should pray for both sides because there are innocent people on both sides. We cannot take sides. Even when one side may be uh, you know, uh, right, more right than the other side, but there's innocent people on both sides that still can get uh, you know, the truth, the word of God, and they can accept the call of God as the right God, as the true God. And... Suddenly, from that one day, from uh, from one day to another, I started looking in my context. People supporting one side and people supporting the other side, and not getting along. And man, when are we going to get peace in our times? Because suddenly we were all followers. So suddenly we were all friends on Facebook and Instagram, and in one day, everyone turned against each other. That's how human heart is. One day we can be friends, one day we can be brothers and sisters, and the other day we don't know. So, there is, a, there is a, a, an important thing we have to remember every day. That our heart has, have, has to be shaped to the shape of God's heart. Because if we shape our heart, if we allow our hearts to be shaped by, by society, by ideologies, by uh, other people's perspective... We can switch with the society too. But if our heart is shaped by the heart, of, uh, the heart of God, guess what? Our character will continue doing the same thing because it's being shaped by God and not by human beings. Amen. Now, chapter 24 in Matthew, as Jesus, verse 3, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, 
You can see that sometimes Jesus um, shares some messages. Jesus shared some, uh, some of his sermons because his disciples were asking with urgency. They wanted to know what was going to happen in the future. They wanted to know what was next in Jesus' agenda, in Jesus' plans. They wanted to know. And sometimes Jesus uh, tell, uh, told them, you know, the times and the day are not for human beings. These things is not for you to understand now, but for later. So in this time, the disciples um, were with, with Jesus and they came to him privately. And they, they told Jesus, tell us, they say, when will this happen and, why, and, and, and what will be there, uh, the sign of your, of your coming and of the end of the age? Just today, we're going to have an, an eclipse on the sun, right? It was this morning. It was this morning. Yeah. So it already happened. Yep. I heard it was at midday. Sorry about that. But I was I was I was awake since five. I was I, I wasn't able to to look at it. There was many people ready for that eclipse, even when not everyone was going to be able to look at it. Uh, my wife told me yesterday. I heard that just some people in Mexico is gonna be able to 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 see it. I'm like, whoa. Well, I think that more people is gonna see it. But the disciples were listening about Jesus' message about, you know, the destruction of uh, Jerusalem. And the disciples told him, tell us when will this happen and why will be there uh, the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered, watch out. So what do you do when someone tells you watch out? You're, you, you're more carefully, right? You're carefully after someone tells you, watch out. <laughs> Jesus told him, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am, what? The Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, right? And that's what we are talking about uh, just a couple minutes ago. Uh, that sometimes we forget that the only justification we can get for our lives is through Jesus Christ. Right? There's nothing we can do to justify ourselves. Only Jesus can justify us. Only Jesus is our Savior. But many people will come in His name claiming, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumor of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. And this is the important thing because, like I said, when I watch the news, when I spend too much time watching the news, uh, instead of getting comfort and, and peace and, you know, and, and instead of thinking of, on God's plans, I start thinking on what's happening in our world. And I start getting pain and sometimes I get mad. Sometimes I want to be on the right side of the story. Sometimes I want to be on the right side with the right people. But when Jesus said here, you will hear of wars and rumor of wars, but see to it that you are not what? Trouble. Alarm or trouble. Now these things should happen. These things will happen. Jesus didn't say, oh, this, this will not happen. I, I will stop it. These things should happen, must happen. And why these things happen in the world? Because it's just um, a reflection. It's just showing us the consequences of sin. And sometimes people ask, so why God didn't stop this war? Why God, God didn't, didn't uh, you know, uh, protect people from any accident? Why is God not protecting people from the bomb? Well, God himself suffered the consequences of sin. Jesus himself suffered the consequences of sin. And people may ask then, why his father didn't protect him? Why God didn't protect Jesus when he was dying on the cross? Because he was showing the world and he was showing the celestial beings that the consequences of sin. That's why I say, as human beings, we are not ready. We are not ready to, we were not ready to live for eternity without God. And in our time, we are learning every day more and more. And, and for our, our generation, it's more easy because we can get a tablet, we can get a phone and look information, any information we want to see. But in our times, we learn every day the consequences of sin. 
Just this week, I was, I was watching this video of a trans age person who can say, I don't feel like I'm 40. And I, I know that some of you are going to like this because you're gonna, you, you want to be younger, right? <laughs> but this person was saying, I don't identify myself uh, with my age. You know, that person may be 35. So how do you identify? I identify like a person of 17 years old. I mean, many things have been allowed lately. Now, can you imagine later in the future if this uh, continues and if people start accepting and adopting this new culture of trans aging and some people, some 40 years old, are going to say, oh, I feel like a 12-year-old person. This is human beings' decisions. This is human beings' perspective. This is human beings' a justification for their actions. So, we are living in times where, where, when we see the consequences of sin, like you say, touching the pinnacle, touching the climax of the story. And when we see the climax of the story, then everything breaks. Now, before persecution, there are many things that are going to be allowed for human beings so they can understand the consequences for their sins. Many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah. How many churches do we have where they claim we have the right God? We have the truthful God. But when we ask, so because some people say, oh, it doesn't matter. We're worshiping the same God. You worship on Saturday, we, should, we worship on Sunday. So let me tell you, if you're worshiping the same God, the same God is making two decisions, is making two options for people. Or are we talking about a God who, when, we, when he speaks, his, his word lasts forever? Because if he, in his original plan in, in Genesis, in the creation of the world, God put a special day for us as human beings, as creations, to spend it with Him as the Creator? Does that mean that He made a mistake and He said later, Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. You're going to worship on Sunday now. On the first day of the week. Because before the, the beginning there was no names for the days. So you're going to worship on the first day now. No, we cannot say that God makes mistakes. God has intentionally... Uh, 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 God intentionally uh, uh, picked the seventh day for human beings, for the creation to spend it with the Creator. But sometimes we take the title and the position of creators. And sometimes we say, oh, we can make changes. We can make arrangements in the Bible, in the Scripture, and we can change some of the things that God already said. There is no place in the Bible that tells us, oh, you're going to worship now on the first day. Uh, oh, Two weeks ago, I was listening to radio, evangelical radio, and they were saying, the reason why we worship on the first day, on Sunday, is because it was the day that Jesus rose. But Jesus never said, after I rose, you know, this day is more powerful because this is the day when I resurrected, when I rose. So now you're going to switch it to Sunday. No. There was a reason why Jesus rested. Which day? The Sabbath. The seventh day. The Sabbath. And the Bible tells us that the women and the people were making preparations which day? On Friday. Friday. They didn't do anything on Sabbath. So the Bible is telling us here that as human beings, we have no right and no title to change God's word. Because if God is a God of perfection, a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then His word lasts forever too. So many people will tell you, it doesn't matter, we're worshiping the same God. Are we? Because your God thinks different than mine. And my God is telling me in His Word that we should worship which day? On the seventh day. And He's telling us too, constantly, that we are living by grace. But that doesn't justify that we can live out the law. We need to follow the law of God. Because if God gave that law to His people, that means that that law will last forever. Those are principles, moral, moral principles. Some people may say, oh, the, the commandments are not, you know, they don't work anymore. They're not effective anymore. So can I murder you? Can I steal from you? How will you feel if I start, you know, desiring to have what you have and not asking for it and just taking it? Those are moral principles that were in God's mind since the beginning. It says here, verse 8, All these things are the beginning of birth.
hands. How many mothers do we have today? Oh, well, we have a, right, a recent mother here, a new, brand new mother. <laughs> How does birth pains feel? That's an honest question because many men here can have an estimate or that we can imagine, but there is no description of birth pains, right? Did someone tell you when the contra contractions and the birth pains were going to start? No one told you. The doctors tell you, maybe around in an hour, you can go and take a walk in an hour, but they don't tell you exactly in five minutes you're, you're going to start having contractions. When I was doing my practices in, in Monterrey, in Mexico, I was, in, um, I was working with, with the moms who were getting ready to start in labor, and they have a, 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 um, they have a medicine for, for months so they can start contractions sooner. Which means that, that you know, we can, uh, as human beings, doctors can control if you can get contractions sooner or if you want it to have more natural. Because in, in my experience there, there was a woman who was suffering and, and she was starting contractions, but the, the baby wasn't coming yet. And I approached her and I said, how can I help you? And the lady told me, I need to hit someone. <laughs> I scratched my head, I was like, uh, let, me, let me bring your husband here, because I, I don't work for that, I didn't sign for that. But as human beings, we can control at least how soon we, we, want, to have, well, the women, we want the women to feel the contraction so they can have their babies. But just Jesus using this illustration of how the beginning of everything will start. Jesus using the illustration of uh, the beginning of birth pains. No one will tell us when. No one will tell us when. No one is it's accurate on telling us when. Even when many pastors are telling us, you know, the end of the world is coming very soon and the persecution is coming very soon. And sometimes some of them start calculating and they start putting dates. But Jesus used this illustration to tell us no one knows. But when, when it starts, you have to be ready. When it starts, you have to be ready. And I think Jesus used this illustration intentionally as well. Because for pregnant, pregnant women, they need to have a whole process and preparation because, before they have labor. They have to do exercises so they don't have any problem when the baby is coming. They have to do exercises. They, have, they need a special diet for the baby and for the mom. So the mom doesn't get preeclampsia after the birth. So the mom doesn't get diabetes after the birth. So, the mother needs to make what? Arrangements and preparations before the baby comes. So as Christians, we have to make preparations because before the, the, the pains of birth comes to our environment. How long are we going to be living here before uh, persecution? I don't know. But are we ready for persecution? Are we ready to... To run or for some stay in the place to continue testifying and sharing, sharing about God? Are we ready to be incarcerated? Are we ready to be punished and, and, and mistreated by people? Are we ready to be, um, you know, um, excluded from our, fr our friends groups and our family groups? Are we ready for that? That's God's, God's problem when that happens. This is our job right now. Right? To get ready. Then you will be handed over to the persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. Sometimes we like to look at the nice side of the story, of the human story. But there are countries where people, where, where Christian people is already suffering persecution and death. There's people that, you know, they, they have to declare and say, you know, whatever happens to me, I will never stop believing in God. Whatever happens to me. And just last Sabbath, I was talking about uh, the, three, the three Hebrew um, men that were before Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, if you don't bow down before my image, you're going to be thrown into the fire. And this, this man said, our God will deliver us from us, and he, uh, from you. And even if God don't deliver us from you, let us tell you, king, that we will not bow down before your image. Are we ready for that? I hope we are. That's the decision. That's the decision we have to make, yes. At the time, 
Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And this is something Jesus experienced in person. This is something Jesus asked his disciples when he turned to his disciples and he asked them, Are you, are you going to go away too? Are you going to leave me too? And, the, and, and Peter said, Where are we going to go? We have nowhere to go. You are the Son of God. Where else are we going to go? But it says that many people will turn away from the faith and they will betray and hate each other. Not only God, but each other as well. Now, are we ready to, are we ready to face uh, complications in life and, and struggles and challenges and continue loving each other? Because, like I say, it's hard to live in peace in our days when the enemy continues attacking to our life and continues striking in our life every day. Are we scared of the physical bumps in another country? What about the, the, the spiritual bumps we receive every day from the enemy? Just last week, I received a call, oh, two weeks ago. I was making arrangements for to have communion service in the Spanish church. And suddenly I received a call when I was pouring the, the, the juice on the cups. And it was, it was Sister Marta Hernandez who called me. And she told me, Pastor, um, my son just passed a couple of hours ago. I just knew that. And I told Martha, where are you now? And she told me, I'm driving back from India. I was like, are you, are you sure you're, you're okay to drive? And she told me, there's someone else helping me to drive. And then I went to, I went to, to George's uh, house. And I spent some time there with Angelia. And we were trying to comfort her. There was Sister Maria and me. We were there and we were trying to, to you know, remind her that there is a promise that, you know, we have to uh, settle with God. We have to fix and make things right so we can have the opportunity to, to live for eternity. Here's what the hard part comes. When people tell you, the lifestyle of the person, and you say, I'm not sure if that person is going to be safe. I'm not sure, but I'm no one to, to determine if he is going to be safe or not. But sometimes as human beings, it is hard to say, I'm not sure. I cannot tell you certainly if he is going to be safe, but you can. You can. Because if you walk away, if you turn your, if you turn your back to God, and if you forget about the, the little faith you have from God, George may resurrect and you, you don't. Because you don't know if, if, if his personal relationship at, the, at, at his final times changed, in his final minutes he changed, or, or he declared that God was God and he accepted Jesus in his heart. I cannot tell you that. But if you turn your back to God and if you walk away from God, you certainly are going to get lost. And if George resurrect and you don't, then you're in a problem. You are in a big trouble. And I told Angelia, you know, the worst is already coming because the mom is coming to the house. So I told Sister Maria, we have to be ready because Martha is going to come in. I don't know the, the condition she's going to be coming in. Mm -hmm. And Martha came in the house and everyone stands up ready to hug her. And she had such a peace in her face mm -hmm. saying, don't worry, everything is okay. And she started crying, because crying is normal. Having feelings is completely normal for human beings. We can cry, we can uh, grieve, but not losing our peace and our faith in God. Mm -hmm. And she approached and she said, don't worry, I'm okay. I, I trust God's plans, I trust God's timings, and I know that God was doing a special work with my son. I just hope that he make arrangements in his life to be ready. Just two days ago, two days before that day, we were at the church in the prayer meeting and we had a, a message. But after that, I some, something in my heart, something in my heart was telling me, pray especially with special attention for the parents and the children and the grandchildren of the people, the, the member of the church. And we did a special prayer there. 
with their parents, for their children, for their grandchildren. And they mentioned their names. And Martha told me, it's not coincidence that God was told you, pray for the children and the parents of the church. Because God was telling you, you have to be ready for what is coming two days after. We cannot expect to be ready the same day. She had to be ready before. She had to be ready two days before or even before that. Now Martha is telling me, Pastor, the reason belongs to God. Only God knows why. But I praise God because, because after George passed, my son, my, my children came, my two sons came to, to the house and they told me, Mom, just a couple weeks ago we were thinking about coming back to church. And now we understand that life is not something that we can, we can take for granted. So me and my family, we're going to start looking for a church. Now the church doesn't save, but it's an opportunity to approach God. It's an opportunity to fix your commitment with God and say, okay, I need to stay busy in my father's business. I need to stay busy in, in what God is calling me to do. There's no coincidence why people have skills and talents and gifts in this church. I don't have the gift of singing. But if it helps somehow, I'll do it. You may have a special gift in your life. You may have a special talent in your life. The people surrounding you is not coincidence. It's the people that God is putting you, putting around you so you can talk to them about the, the love of God. The people around you is not coincidence. It's people that God put around you so you can work with them. I have a friend in, in, in Syria. She's a, mission, she's a missionary over there and she's been working with the, with the, you know, with the kids that don't have foster kids. And she was sharing with me that she finds very um, shocking how sometimes kids come to the shelter with a painful background, with a horrible background of how they were treated by their parents, how they were treated by the adult people around them. And she told me, they came here because God has a special purpose and a special plan for people in Syria, especially with kids. A, a hard question to, to answer in our days the hard question is, why the kids in Palestine, in Hamas and Israel, are dying, right? Are dying. Babies, kids. If we go to the Bible, if we take the reference from the Bible, we can see that there were nations, there were nations who, uh, that their babies had to die too. But... If we see the reason behind the context of how they were living back then, God, they give them an opportunity for the adults to change their lifestyle and their beliefs and their practices. Now, we have to, we have to be aware that the things we do as adults affects not only us, but who else? The kids, the children. What will happen? What will happen? 20 years from now, with the kids, if they still alive and they hear about the war, the war that happened 20 years before, they're going to grow their hatred, most of them. They're going to go ha hatred and they're going to they're gonna desire vengeance. Sometimes God prevents that, grow, that, that spirit and that feeling in, in people's heart. Death is the worst thing we can imagine as human beings. But for God, it's a, it's a pause in people's life. Mm -hmm. For us, it's the worst thing. We are scared of death. We are scared of sleeping. We are scared of going to the grave, not knowing what will happen next. But God is telling us, you know what happened next if you, still stay, if you stay close to God. So don't be afraid. That's, God, that's why Jesus is telling us here, you will hear of wars and rumor of wars, but this is not for you to be alarmed, not to be troubled, but for you to be ready. 
Because afraid is the people that is not ready. Afraid is the people that, is, that doesn't have God in their hearts. That they are not sure if they are following God through His Word. My wife was telling me this week uh, uh, from one of her patients. She was telling me, I, I, am, I spend this time with my patient. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how many times members from other church call her to know how is she doing. You will be amazed. We are staying, you were staying behind other churches because their practices on motivating and encouraging their brothers and sisters is better than us sometimes. Many, many members from other churches calling this person and telling her, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? Do you need something? And they used to spend just a couple minutes with them. Our mission is to encourage each other, is to motivate each other. Is to prepare each other. Is to talk about this with each other. How do you feel after a Bible study uh, in a small group? How do you feel when you're studying the Word with others and you get along and you understand and you're learning together okay. what God is asking out from us, right? Mm -hmm. We feel encouraged. But there's many people that receive this book. There is people that receive a Bible. They receive a Sabbath school lesson. They receive a, a, a sign of the times. But they have no idea of what they're reading. And just by calling people and asking them, How are you doing? How can I help you? Don't worry. God is with you. God is with me. God will provide. How? Sometimes through us. Sometimes through me as an individual. But God will provide. Don't be afraid. Don't lose courage. God is with you. Simple words, but powerful words when the Holy Spirit is with us. Let me tell you that. Simple words that you may say, oh man, it's easy to say, I will pray for you. But when the Holy Spirit is with you, telling a person, I will pray for you. God will provide. God can do miracles through you too. Verse 10 says, at the time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of must will grow cold. It is hard to see how people don't care about each other anymore. When I see people on, on, on the side of the road, sometimes I have stopped to help them. And nothing happened. I mean, any, no, no incident happened. But there are times where you question yourself and you say, is this, is this safe to stop and help another person? I mean, any, anything can happen. When I was, when I was living uh, by myself, when I was single before getting married, uh, I had another church that was an hour from the other, and I took a homeless guy in the middle of a rain, <laughs> and I drove an hour with him, and we spent some time together talking, and, and my wife told me later, don't do that, because it's not safe, but I was telling her, I felt it, I felt that I, I, I had to help this guy, and I don't know if what we talk about helped him in his life, but at least I'm sure that I follow my heart. I follow when the Spirit was telling me, help this man. Now, it is harder when you are on the side of the road and no one comes and help you. I hope you have insurance. <laughs> because people don't stop for you. Many, many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of the wickedness of the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be safe. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. How important is our mission? I mean, um, how, of how much we are doing mission and how much we are preaching and how much that doesn't determine if Jesus is coming sooner or later. Only God knows the time. But if He, if he gets us working in the mission, we can be sure that Jesus can come or we can die uh, before Jesus comes, but we are ready to receive Him. You changed my script in one of my videos, <laughs> right? And that was one of the quotes. What are you going to do when Jesus comes again? 
Are you going to be the field or are you going to be working in the field? Because Jesus saw the fields and he saw that the fields were ready. He was obviously he was looking at people. That's why I'm asking, are you going to be field? Are you going to be those who Jesus wanted to be rich? Or are you going to be a worker who is reaching people for, for Jesus? So when you see standing in the holy place, the abominations that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one in the house stop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their flock. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. When Jesus was um, calling his disciples, there is one story that sometimes I apply to my life. When people was trying to tell Jesus, oh, you know, but I have to take care of my dad before he passed. I have to take care of my things first so I can come and follow you. <laughs> and what Jesus told them. Which means when we start following Jesus, there should be nothing stopping us. You see, it is hard for us as human beings because we are attached to relationships. We are attached to family. We are attached to professional life. But when you start following Jesus, nothing should stop you. Nothing. Don't, come, don't go back for your things. Don't go back for your desires. Don't go back for your dreams. Because sometimes your dreams may destroy you. Sometimes your desires may, turn, may, may take you away from the presence of God. Now, there are other promises. But I will go to verse 30. I will finish with this. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet. Now, when you read this loud trumpet, where are you taken to? To what other births you're taking? First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16, verse 16. When Jesus comes again, we will hear his voice. There was, a, there was a professor who used to say, there was a reason why Jesus called Lazarus by his name, right? There's a reason why Jesus called Lazarus by his name when he resurrected Lazarus. Because he, if he will say, rise, all the cemetery will rise. That's why Jesus was very specific. Lazarus, come out. But at that moment, we will hear a trumpet calling every one of those who believe in the Son of Man, in Jesus Christ. And He will send His angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather His elect from the four winds, from the end of the heavens to the other. Now, learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as it twigs gets tender and its leaves comes out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. There are many things that are uh, that we can see happening in the past in the in the in the biblical stories, but they're repeated again, right? The people in the flood, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. There are many things that are being repeated through history, and we are living in another time when we need to make sure that we are ready to receive the Son of Man, because the Jewish culture, the Jewish were certain they were sure that they were ready to receive the Messiah. And they have the Messiah among them, but they weren't ready. Now we are Seventh-day Adventists. We are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why we are Adventists, because we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And since the name of our denomination is telling us, why are we here? We are here because we are expecting the second coming of Jesus Christ. Then the question is, are we ready? 
Are we ready for the events that are coming to our life? Are we ready for the events that are coming to our society? Because we can expect the Sunday law. We can expect violence in our city. But if we are not ready to fight the battle for a personal life, none of those things, none of those events will matter. Because we don't know how to deal and how to fight our personal battle with God on our side. I lost both of my grandparents the same week because of COVID. I received a call at 3 in the morning. My mom called me and she told me, uh, I just call you because uh, your, 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 grand, your grandpa passed. It was first. And I asked him, how's my dad? Well, you know how's your dad. I say, I know he's a pastor, but how is he doing? He's, and she said, my mom said, he's okay. He's just thinking, how is he going to get the strength and the courage to, to share the same feeling with his brothers and sisters? And some of my, my uncles and aunts, they weren't ready. They weren't ready for that. I've seen brothers and sisters in the cemetery uh, putting their family members on, on the, on the um, cemetery. And they jump to the grief. They jump desperately, asking, don't leave me. Why are you leaving me? And sometimes after that, we, we speak and we, we uh, you know, I ask, why do you look so desperately if you know what you believe in? And she's like, I don't know. It's just the emotions that, that took control. <laughs> but I'm sure that God is in control. A week later, during that week, there was a, a whole challenge uh, for my family. They, they were making lines at 3 or 2 a.m. in the morning to get oxygen tanks. The oxygen tanks were less and they were more expensive, which means that every day it was harder for them to get a, a, an oxygen tank. And my grandma used to take the whole oxygen tank in one, in one day. So after, one, one, after the week, after one week, my grandma passed. And my mom called me again and she tells me, your grandma passed now. I was, I was in shock. Because even when I didn't spend too much time with my grandparents, I loved them. But I was just imagining my, my, my dad dealing with that. And after a couple months, I talked to him and I told him, how do you, how do you deal with that? Because I haven't lost any of you. So I, have, I, didn't, I don't have that experience yet. I haven't lost a children, I haven't lost a parent. I have loose friends, but it's not the same thing. And she tells me, I was reading 1 Thessalonians 4 over and over and over and over again until I understood. Until I understood that all these things that we are living here, like Solomon said, King Solomon said, everything is an illusion. An illusion means that everything that we live here is just temporary. Everything we are living in this world has a purpose. To know the consequences of sin, to know that as children of God, God can work through us, and many people can be saved from the consequences of sin. So, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing in this world, in these times? Are we getting along with the world, or are we working to try to save the world with God on our side? Earlier we were talking in the, uh, here, we had a little conversation about how churches sometimes uh, apply methods to get along with, with the people outside. And how sometimes churches adopt certain uh, practices and beliefs to get along with the people outside. The reality is that if we, need, if we want to heal people, we need to bring the antidote, and sometimes the antidote is not very, it's not very nice, right? For COVID, you have to put a whole Q-tip in your nose. It's not something nice. You need a shot that almost killed you. The antidote is not nice, right? But if you want to heal from sin, if you want to heal from a sinful past, from a sinful lifestyle, the antidote not always going to be nice. But the antidote can, can tell you that if you take it, you're going to be safe. The antidote in this, in this case is Jesus. And the antidote 
uh, and to get the antidote, we need to accept our condition and repent. That's why the whole message, the whole gospel is about repent because the, because the kingdom of God is coming, is near. That's the whole gospel. Repent because the kingdom of God is near. Jesus is coming very soon. That's the whole gospel. Do you want to live for eternity? Follow God. Obey God. Do you want to be resurrected and to see your family members and your friends who believe in Jesus Christ? Well, stay close to God. Stay close to Him. Jesus said that He is the way, He is the life, He is the resurrection. Right? Jesus is life. But Jesus is holy as well. And to be and to reflect the character, to 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 follow uh, the, 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 the character of the teacher, we must go through the process of sanctification as well. To be like the teacher, to be like the master. And Jesus said, Go and make disciples, followers of Jesus, teaching them what I have taught you. So in our times, in our days, doesn't matter if human beings are telling you, be on the right side of the story. Be on the right side. Let me tell you something. If you want to be on the right side, be on God's side. Don't be on Satan's side. Because no one is right. No one is wrong in this war. Politicians are making decisions and people are suffering. That's what it's all about. And people sometimes follow the leaders, follow human beings, and sometimes they adopt the feeling. But in this case, the question is, are they following God or are they following their leaders, their human leaders? My invitation is, don't follow their leaders, follow God. And you will know that the situation that is happening now, it's because our battle is bigger than ever. The enemy is working harder than ever with leaders, with people next to us, with family, family members, with friends. That's why our personal, our personal relationship matters more than ever in our days. So I would like to pray this morning for the families that are grieving, for the families that are suffering, for the families that lose a, a loved one. And sometimes it's not, it's not easy to say something. Sometimes you don't have the words. Sometimes people just want someone to be next to us, right? We sometimes cannot bring the solution, but we know, we know who has the solution. So, I would like to pray for uh, Laverne. I would like to pray for the Marta Hernandez. And for, our, uh, for all our family members as well. Because we don't know. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. But if we are right with God today, nothing else matters. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this morning service. We thank you, Lord, because you always remind us that you thought of us before the creation of this world. You thought of everyone in here and everyone in this world. Just by knowing that before our conception, there was a lot of options. There was a lot of uh, options for other people to be born, but if you choose us to be born in this world, you choose us to be alive in this world, and you choose us because we can make an impact in the people of other people's life. There's many people that didn't understand their purpose, there's people that don't understand their purpose, there's people that don't know what is coming next, what is coming in the future, there's people that is living just day by day. But Lord, we know why you choose us to be in this world, to preach the good news to the people before Jesus comes to this planet. We know that you love everyone. We know that you love the sinner and you hate the sin. But we also know, Lord, that there is people that is following more their desires and they're following more their emotions instead of you. Just help us, Lord, to be perseverant, to be courageous, Help us, Lord, to continue doing the work. Forgive us, Lord, if at any point we forgot about that purpose. 
Forget us, Lord, if at any point we think that everything that matters is our, is our work, everything that matters is our family, everything that matters is what we want, Lord. And sometimes we forget what you want. Sometimes we forget about the people that is sitting next to us. Sometimes we forget about the co-worker that is working with us. Sometimes we forget about the, the children we're working with. Forgive us, Lord, because sometimes we put our desires and our dreams and our hopes and our, and our goals before, Lord, your dreams and your hopes for us. We pray that this church, Lord, can grow. And we ask, Lord, that you can help us to do that. We cannot do it ourselves. And I would like to ask you, Lord, in a special way that your Holy Spirit can touch the hearts and the minds of any of us if we are living in sin. If we have temptations that we haven't dealt with. If we have sins, Lord, that we haven't confessed. If we, are, if we have sins that we, we feel comfortable with, Lord. I ask you, Lord, in a special way that your Holy Spirit can touch our minds and our hearts today so we can settle things with you and we can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Be with us today, Lord. Help us to enjoy this Sabbath with our families, but also help us, Lord, to think how can we do the mission today and every day of our life until Jesus comes again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.